challenging one, this. The first bit, I'm hoping, is going to be relatively easy. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. But I want you to be able to go from with a quadratic to be able to convert from standard form to vertex form and write down the vertex of the problem. By the way, just I, I've said this a lot, just checking you understand. When you change the form, what doesn't change? The parabola, good, yeah? The actual function, the shape of the parabola, where it is on the zoom, nothing changes. So a different form does not change anything else about the function. It's just how it looks in the equation and what information I can get from it, okay? That's super important. So if you ever want to check that your form is correct, what you did to change it, all you have to do is graph the two different forms, and you should get exactly the same thing. If your two lines are different, two curves, your two parabolas are different, you've done something wrong. Okay? All right. Um, we did talk about this yesterday then. Just quickly then. Have you all written that down, by the way? Uh, I think so. Okay, so vertex form of a quadratic is generally accepted to be a times x minus h all squared plus k, h and k often used. I did give you a, a worksheet though, um, that's got a and v and it's also plus a, but or it's got p's and q's and things. That's just to show you that we can use other letters and it doesn't actually change anything about it. Okay, um, this is the best form, having a minus h in the bracket is actually significant, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. All right. Um, what's important to understand is it doesn't always have to be minus something. All right. Can you see on the screen where one of them is not minus something? Or number four, it's got x plus two, for instance. Now, just out of interest, if I just separate the x plus 2 bit, x plus 2, could I write x plus 2 as x minus something instead? Who said that? Is that louder? Negative 2. Right? So we could express x plus 2 in the form x minus negative 2. All right, we can think about it. Those of you that are really on it, you might go, ah, that, that will help me somehow. Having the negative h will help me understand something about where the vertex is, maybe. All right, a couple of you, I think, tweaked something yesterday. Well, let's just have a look. Um, before we go into be able to find this form from standard form, let's just check that you understand how to find the coordinates of the vertex without having to um, put it into your computer. So, one a, uh, sorry, question one is y equals x minus three all squared. What's the what are the coordinates of the vertex? Do you remember from yesterday? You nodded, so go for it. Pardon? Almost. Yeah. Oh, sorry, positive three. Change. Positive three. One. What? Remember that from yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Number two, y equals negative x minus four squared minus three. So the vertex is at west. I'm going to give you the minus three bit. Positive four. Oh, is that my battery? Yeah. Yeah. Time in the office. Pain, but. Um. 
How do you feel about those, yeah? I lost the negative, um, made negative, yeah. But that just changed what it was like. Do you remember yesterday we, we did look at what does the minus in front change? It's like the, the yeah. below the x axis. It's the, um, I said it yesterday. Uh, the negative or the positive, uh, <laughs> so close, tip of your tongue, isn't it? The concave, yeah, yeah, concave up, concave down. Remember, I well, maybe we should just check this, right? We can do it on our calculators. We've all got calculators, right? We kind of think this one because it's a positive, will be concave up, and the coordinates of the vertex will be at 3, 1. And I'm kind of suggesting that if this was a positive, it would be concave up with coordinates at 4, negative 3. And if it's negative, then it will be concave down, but the coordinates still at 4, negative 3. That's what we're suggesting. So how about you put this one into your calculators now and check? Is that am I right or am I am I wrong? Am I lying to you? So just to confirm what we're doing, we're looking at is it a concave down but the same vertex, or do we think it's concave down but now at what did we say negative four, negative three? Which one? Is it? Although we know it's not this one because it's going to be concave down, not concave up. But does it have a vertex negative four, negative three, or positive four? Uh, I think you went over this yesterday. But what does the Q in front of the bracket? Doesn't it? Doesn't do anything. Right? Well, that's what we're kind of. I suggested that, but I'm asking you to check that now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the yeah. positive is concave up. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. But where's the vertex? Is the vertex is Matthew right in saying but the negative changes the negative inside, therefore the vertex is somewhere else, or does the vertex stay in the same place? Stays in the same place. Have you all confirmed that? Yeah. That's what I'm asking you to do. Oh. Yeah. All right. So you have just do a little bit of investigation. That is the. Uh, discovered that the num so a negative in front by the way what number is a negative just a negative what number is that one negative one yeah so that suggests this number in front of the brackets has not impacted the coordinates of the vertex okay so we are happy that the vertex still relates to this number and this number yeah it's still that number and that number this one doesn't impact it at all. Okay, so let's just, uh, before we move on then, can you just do those other four for me? Write them down. Let's look at these two then. Um, I'll come back to those ones, but let's look at these two. Um, the coordinates of the vertex of this one is? Negative one. Negative one. Coordinates of the vertex on this one is negative two. Positive one. Can anyone generalize it just in words? What like if you had to explain to someone who wasn't quite getting it and you just wanted to give them a quick this is how you do it. What what would you say? Take you take that number and it's just the negative. Which number? I don't know. Screen letter is it H. Well, so there's no X. Oh, we're talking to someone that doesn't really get it. So, how would you make it quick? The number after X. after X in the brackets, and you write down the opposite of it. Yeah? So, that's one thing people say. It's like, oh, that's plus one, therefore it's minus one. This is plus two, therefore it's negative two. I can explain that. I'm not going to yet. All right, I can explain why. When we do more about function notation and transformations of functions, we will do a lot of that next year, by the way. Um, and in UDP, you'll be doing a lot of that. So this is this is also a 
a form really useful for transformations of functions. What would you say about the y coordinate of the vertex? So not using H's and K's, it's just the number at the end. Opposite? No, just take the same number, yeah? All right. Has anyone figured out why the, when we do look at the um, AX minus H squared, what was it? Minus or plus? Plus, okay. Anyone thinking why having minus H instead of plus H in the formula really helps? Sometimes, but not always. Well, it's based on what I said before. If you look at this one, look, 2 times X plus 1 squared minus 1, you've said we have to take that number and do the opposite of it, yeah? Which is fine. But what if I actually write it in this form? I actually have 2x minus minus 1, as so that said. Now what do you notice about the coordinates of the vertex? It's minus 1, minus 1. What do you notice about the x-coordinate now? It's the same thing, rather than having to remember to do the opposite. So you either think, take that number and do the opposite, which is, to be honest, what most people do, that's what they think, or you can go, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm into my math, so I want to understand these things more. The reason why the general formula is written x minus h rather than x plus h is because that actually gives me the opposite. If I write it as minus, the number that it's subtracting is the x coordinate of the vertex. I don't have to do any opposite in the line. All right, that makes sense? Yeah. Not super important to you, you just need to remember if it's plus, might you, you do the opposite, All right? Okay, what did you come out with for these two? Just paste, paste. What did that? What did you come out with the vertex for this one? Zero. Zero. Two. Good. What did you come up with the vertex for this one? Zero, negative one. Great. For those people that haven't figured out why, well, really, negative x squared could be written as negative x minus zero squared plus two x minus 0 is just x, okay? And this one would just be y equals 3, x minus 0 squared minus 1, okay? Simply so. All make sense to you? Yeah. So that's why it's useful. We can find the vertex. By the way, concave up, concave down. Down. Concave up, concave down. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Concave. Concave up or down? Up. Okay, good. Let's now look at the challenging bit, which is I gave you a worksheet. Um, we are going to convert um, from standard form, it develops some difficulty, but we're going from standard, standard to vertex form. So let's have a look at the first one. I believe it's y equals x squared plus 8x. Okay, first one on your sheet, right? We are going to be basing our work on perfect squares. squares, right? That's why they're useful. We are also going to be doing something called completing the square. So that's, that's an important kind of thing for you to be aware of. I remember getting asked by a girl at school once, she wanted things done in files or hands. Got used to do that. <laughs> 
specifically it had to be done in bounds right well, written as notes to that makes me very Say so again. Oh, well, that's the question. Those are side notes. They have to be in clouds. I was like, can't you just draw your own clouds? No, but can't you do it as well? Did I do that? Right. X squared plus X. So I'm going to go through some steps for you. Right. What we do when we go from standard form to vertex form is first of all we need to find the bit in the brackets, okay? And if you remember a perfect square, so a perfect square, for instance, an example of, well, can anyone give me an example of a perfect square? X squared plus, well, let's have a look. X squared plus 8X plus what would be the perfect square? Plus 16, good. Okay? That would be the perfect square. When I factorise x squared plus 8x plus 16, what is it in factorised form? x plus 8x plus 1 plus 3. x plus 4 squared. Why do I know that? Because 4 plus 4, 4 times 4, yeah? It could be x plus 4, x plus 4, but we actually write it as x plus 4 squared. If I write it like that, what's the coordinates of the vertex, by the way? Negative 4, 0. Is a perfect square already in vertex form? Yeah, it is, right? The vertex is a negative 4, 0. Do we have a perfect square here? No. No. What's missing? No. About 16. Well, when I say missing, it's what's different. So, but what we can do is we can look at the x squared and we really focus on this, what would be the middle term, the term in x. And we write down what it would be if it was a perfect square. So I know that x squared plus 8x plus 16 would be x plus 4 all squared, yeah? 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 Because what do I do? I take the 8 and I divide that by 2 and I get the 4. So the 4 is what comes and goes inside the brackets. That's why we focused on this perfect square earlier. And we write it as x plus 4 all squared. Okay, is that right for step one? Yeah. Is this complete? Are we done? Will x squared plus 8x and x plus 4 squared give me the same graph? Yeah. yeah. Why is everyone yawning today? You're all at a party or something about that. It's, ego. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not ego, it's, it's loads of ego. Alright, x plus 4 squared will not give me the same graph as x squared plus 8x. Why do I know? Well, because I've already looked on the right hand side, x plus 4 squared is actually x squared plus 8x plus 16. This is where I do the completing the square bit. I've done the square bit, but I need to complete it. Is this the same as this? How how different is it? What's different? It's this is right. This this bit is actually sixteen too big. Yeah. So what do I do? Minus sixteen. This bit here is the completing the square bit, All right? So step one, I don't know, I'm not very good at writing, I should do, I should write all these, step one is step two, is that I'm not a very good writer, as you think, but step one is to figure out what bit's in the brackets by taking the 8x bit and doing the divide by two, 
right? Once you've figured this bit out, so uh, this bit here is step one, and what I did is I then go, right, if I've got this, what does that end up with? And I've realized that this bit here is not right, yeah? That's the bit too much. So what do I need to do to make this the same as this? I have to subtract the 16. Okay, should we go through that process with the next one? Yeah, just one more with you and then I can let you get on with the rest of the set. So that was a one, this could be a two. So we've got y equals x squared plus six x. Okay, first step then is to figure out what will go in the brackets. Over to you, x plus three. How do I know it's x plus three, Anna? Oh, yes. Six divided by two is three. Good. All right. What I tend to do is now go over here. You don't up to you how you want to work with your space. But I then go, right, what would x plus three squared actually give me? And I know it would give me x squared plus six x. Great, brilliant. But I would actually have a plus nine. The plus nine is the thing that's different. So what do I need to do? Subtract. Subtract the nine. You will see this done in a different way in textbooks, I think, slightly. But I like it this way. I think it just makes sense to me. Hopefully to you. All right. So I'm thinking, I'm looking all the way up to B4 on your sheet is all pretty simple. You'll notice though that B, the B's will end up being fractions and things to work with, right? So I'm going to get you to do three and four. You should be able to do those. If you get stuck on B, we can always talk about it. Um, and then the C's is where we really need to be. All right. Go for it. A couple of more if you wouldn't mind. Pay attention. So I'm going to do um, a B and a C. Okay. So let's just have a look at B1, which is Y equals X squared plus 3X. I am going to do it, like I said, I've seen some people do it in uh, decimals. I'd like it in fractions. Decimals is, is not a problem, but fractions are just nice to work with. And those of you that want to push yourself, understanding fractions will really help you make things much simpler in the future. So what do I do? I figure out what's in my brackets first. How do I do that? It's going to be x plus, well, we take the number and do what? Half it, divided by two. How do I write? Three divided by two if I don't use decimals. One and half. Well, I do it easier than that actually. I could do that, but right. It's just yeah, I actually just write three divided by two. Square. Alright? Over here I'm gonna just check out what does um, y equals x plus three over two squared give me? Well, I know it's y equals x squared plus 3x. That's good. What do I get when I square this? I actually get 9 over 4. Yeah, so 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is 9 over 4. So some of you will have that as the 0.25, because that's a quarter here. All right, 2.25. It works, but I just find that's easier for me to do. Nice and easy. What does that mean? Well, this is then nice and easy. That's what's different. So I actually need to subtract 9 over 4. I'm done. So working in fractions, it's I think it's easy because I haven't had to use my calculator. So that was looking confused. What don't you understand? Expand it. Yeah, so if you think, don't forget what we've done in the past, which is, how do I do this? What I don't do is that and that, do I? Remember, it's x plus 3 over 2 times x plus 3 over 2. Yeah? 
And when I do that, when we expand, do you remember x times x is x squared? 3 over 2x and 3 over 2x added together makes the 3x. And then finally, 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, yeah, 3 over 2 multiplied by 3 over 2 is 9 over 4. Okay? Right. When you add, you don't. Right, just, uh, hopefully I will have time. Might just run out. Let's have a look at x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now, hopefully I can then give you this example and then uh, next lesson you can rattle through. Slight extra step. Not much different. Are we all on this? This is the next stage, obviously. Same thing. x plus what? It is just 3. We ignore this and we're still just looking at that is x plus 3 squared. However, this time when I look at x plus 3 squared and I expand it, I get x squared plus the 6x, which is nice, I get plus 9. Now this time there's a slight extra thing. I've got plus 9, but I want plus 5. Minus 4. So now I only... I've got to subtract 4 from that to get the plus 5, so it's now only minus the 4 rather than minusing the whole 9. Yeah? Now you can see what's going to happen when you have to subtract like this and you've got fractions and decimals involved. It's going to be slightly more involved, but not too bad, right? It's not super difficult. It's just, it's not as simple as the number at the end, you just subtract it. And you've got to work out how much you subtract. And actually, sometimes you might actually need to add on, not subtract. What are the coordinates of the vertex of that one, by the way? Minus three, minus four. Good. So we're still there. Brilliant. Video will be up if you need to review that before next time. Make sure you do.